Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Cahill and welcome back to my channel. It has been just over a year since I took one of the most scariest steps a writer can take and officially started querying one of my novels and I want to talk about it. Me finally getting off my butt and querying was a long time coming uh, in my personal opinion. I've been writing since I was 15 years old and have always had like the goal of being a traditionally published author. Uh, I just never really did anything towards it because back when I was a teenager, and this is gonna give away how old I am, uh, we didn't have the internet and we didn't have social media and we didn't have the writing community that we have now unless you went out and physically looked for it and then even if you did go around and look for it sometimes there could be very pretentious writing groups uh most commonly filled with a lot of older people not quite my vibes as a teenager you know so i sort of like did everything on my own i didn't learn much about the whole writing publishing process not fully until i actually started being on the internet and social media and learning that way how things worked like no you can't just write a book and expect to send it off to a publishing agency no not to an agent like to a publishing agency <laughs> and they'll be like oh it's fantastic well like, it doesn't work like that there is work involved and yes I've always been working towards it but I never was really serious about it until maybe 2015 or so I started being a bit more a bit more serious about you know what I wanted to do and how I wanted to go about it and you know I had a lot of hits and misses with the work that I was doing I had a lot of starts with projects that I never ended up finishing that have fallen to the wayside. I had my one project which was a four book series uh, entitled Nephilim which I was just Mommy. like this, yes, which I was like this is going to be the first novel that I get published. This is the one. Um, and then I got seven drafts in and I just couldn't couldn't fix it so a couple of years ago I did end up shelving that. And then we get to 2017 for NaNoWriMo where I wrote the project which ended up being the one that I queried first which was a YA fantasy. It was called for the very long time just Project Body Swap um, but has now been retitled to Thrice a Broken Oath which I'm not 100% sure on that title uh, but it, it will do for now. And, you know, the beta readings I had for it went well. There wasn't a lot of major story changes or character changes that I needed to make, unlike other projects. And I thought it was in a very, very good place. It was a very, very strong novel. And this would be the one that I would start to query. So on the 23rd of March, 2021, I took the plunge and I started querying Project Body Swap. It was very nerve-wracking. Project Body Swap, aka Thrice a Broken Oath, aka Tabo, or Tabo? How would I pronounce it? Ah, Tabo, Tabo, because it's a, bro a broken oath, twice a Tabo. English sucks. Tabo, Tabo, because that just, no, it just sounds weird. Thrice a Broken Oath is a multi-POV, 105,000 word, I wouldn't really call it an epic or a high fantasy set in a world that is not our own and it follows Noah who is a member of the high family who is like the most important family bar the king in his family and he is the only person in his family to have been born without magic uh, in a world where magic is everything and he's sort of the outcast in his family because of it um, and he wants nothing more than to get magic because he thinks that magic will help improve his worth. He meets Tasha, who is a priestess at the temple, who tells him that she is able to give him magic through an ancient and mysterious spell that she found in some broken, ripped pages spell book she found at the back of her library. And he's reluctant about it, but he agrees to do it anyway because his want for magic 
and the respect and love of his family outweighs the, this sounds like a really, really bad idea. And you know what? It was a really, really bad idea because they do the spell, but it doesn't give Noah magic like they assumed. Instead, it bonds the two together. They cannot be too far apart, otherwise it will cause them immense pain. And as time goes on and the bond strengthens, they are able to feel each other's pain and pleasure. They are able to sort of catch glimpses of each other's memories and knowledge. And worst of all, this is an old spell. It's a forbidden spell. It's a spell that has been essentially erased from history because it is fatal. There is no cure. There is no counter spell. But Tasha doesn't accept this. She believes that there is some record of it somewhere. So she and Noah end up going cross country on a journey to the Pillars, which is the first and oldest building or temple in their entire country in the hopes that there is some remnants of knowledge there that is going to help them. But Tasha and Noah were the only two to get bonded on that fateful evening. There is a third person who was bonded to Tasha and Noah at the time, and her name is Sefi. She is a mysterious, sort of vindictive, very, very powerful magic user who, through very, very bad luck, got caught up in the spell in an ethereal form and is thus stuck within Tasha's body. So throughout the novel, Tasha and Sefi switch control of Tasha's body as they try to sort of get themselves from the very, very southern tip of the country to the very, very northern tip, all the while somehow meddling in the Chosen One's prophecy and causing mischief wherever they may go before the bond becomes fatal and kills them all. Now, I personally think that um, Thrice a Broken Oath has a very, very strong premise. It has uh, really, really strong characters. It deals with things like generational anxiety and uses magic as a construct for wealth inequality and sort of like a coming of age during the, you know, great strife and tension, which is, you know, sort of like, sort of like now right so i feel like it also has very relatable content within it as well so i'm like yeah this is this is strong we we've got a good one here that people are going to be able to relate to one of the other reasons i decided to start querying thrice a broken oath was the fact that when i reread it i still really enjoyed it and you know i'm smiling at the sarcasm and the banter between all of the characters and i'm smiling at the reveals and the twists that happen in it and i'm just like i'm enjoying the book and it's a good sign that after you know lots of revisions and writing and having to deal with the book i am still enjoying it so that i also took as a very very good sign you know this is a strong solid contender and it's time for me to take that step and so i did I ended up doing a lot of prep in preparation. <laughs> I ended up doing a lot of preparation in preparation of querying. Just sounds weird. I did a lot of prep, basically, before I started querying. Uh, I like to over-prepare for things like that to keep myself as organised as possible, especially because I was going to be sending out multiple queries at a time and I wanted to make sure that I was able to very easily keep track of everything that I was doing and everything that was going on. So I started with my lists and the research for agents in the UK. Um, I very specifically only queried in the UK as opposed to the UK and uh, the USA, which I think UK writers can do, but that was just extra effort and research that I wasn't bothered to put in. I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm English. I will query in the UK first because that is where I'm from. And, you know, it would be so much easier communication wise for it to be an agent who lives in the country that I also live in. Um, so I went online, I scoured through all of the lists of all of the literary agencies in the UK, checked everything that they published, everything that they were looking for. And I picked all of the ones who represented writers who um, do um, fantasy and who do YA. And then I went through all of those websites for all of those literary agents and I checked out all of their agents and then, you know, some of them didn't, some of them weren't looking at the time, that's fine. And then I wrote down my list um, and I'm not going to show you the list because I don't want to give away names and literary agencies. 
Um, but I wrote one list and the first list was a list of the literary agency and then the agent that I was going to be submitting my query to. And then the next list that I wrote, which I can show you, uh, is this list here. So beneath the post-it notes, I have the name of the uh, literary agency. And then here I have a very like sort of quick notes. This is what I need to send off in my query package. Most of them um, are the same, a covering letter, a synopsis, and some amount of pages of your work. Some of them are full manuscript, some of them are 10,000 words, three, three chapters, 10 pages, etc, etc. So I had my cheat sheet list. Um, it did not stop me from going to the literary agency website and double, triple, quadruple checking what I needed to send off um, when I actually ended up sending off all of the queries and I still do it now. Even though I've got the cheat sheet, I will still double check on the website. Even though I copied the information from the website and I know that the information that I have is correct because I don't want to get it wrong, basically. Once I had my list, I also made a setup in my bullet journal. Again, which I can show you uh, because I've covered all of the important information. So here is the setup that I have, obviously beneath the post-it notes. Again, we have the literary agency and the name of the specific agent that I am sending it to. And then we have the date I sent it off. Um, was it rejected? Did they request anything else? Um, was it accepted? And then the dates that anything happened. Um, so that's it. It's a very, very simple one. I didn't want to make it too complicated. And the process that I went through in regards to querying, because I didn't want to query too many at once. Because it's the UK, you know, we're a small island uh, compared to other places. Uh, there is not an exhaustive list of literary agents for me to send to. Um, I think I've only got about 30 on my list, like that's it. Um, so I decided to send my queries off in groups of five. So I picked the first five that I was going to send off to and I made sure that uh, everything that I needed to send to them was exactly the same. So they all asked for a covering letter, they all asked for a one page synopsis they all asked for the first 50 pages and then I knew exactly what I was going to be picking so then I could send them off first. And then my plan was as I got an email back, most likely rejection, from one I would then yes, I would then send off the next one. Um so I would always have five queries out Mommy, at one time. Then. So I would always have five queries out at once. <laughs> Now, I'm saying the word covering letter a lot. Um, we don't do queries the same way that America does queries, which was a very fun thing to discover when I started researching querying in the UK. Because obviously everything that I've heard about querying and everything that I've looked at on the internet about writing a query is for America. It was not helpful. I had spent so much time writing like a perfect query in order to send off the literary agents in the UK. We don't need a query. Not the same type of query that everyone else uses. It was very frustrating at the time. So in the UK, you need a covering letter which tells the literary agents a bit about you and your experience. You write an elevator pitch, which is one to three sentences describing your novel and then you send the synopsis not 250 to 350 words of a query two to three sentences so there was me with what I thought was a perfect query and now I need to do one in two to three sentences which was even worse it was difficult enough breaking down 105,000 words into 250 words now I've got to break 105,000 words into two to three sentences um <sighs> It was not fun. I managed though, so it's okay. This is the elevator pitch that I have. 17 year old Noah struggles to fit in without magic until a spell gone wrong bonds him to a priestess, a bond which prevents him from being apart. Now Noah must travel to a place before history begins to find the counter spell, despite a demonic evil terrorizing the country and before the bond becomes fatal. Is it the best elevator pitch? Probably not. Was I happy with it when I first wrote it a year ago? Yes. I think this is the first time I'm actually physically reading the entire thing since I first wrote it. 
despite the fact that I've sent this query off multiple times to multiple people. Um, do I think it's that good now? You know what, not particularly, but <laughs> hindsight, you know? And of course the entire way that I wrote the covering letter changed depending on what different literary agents were looking for. Some people just wanted it to be a bit more simple, some people wanted more of a um, personal statement regarding to it. Um, how long have you been writing for? What is your experience? A couple of them have asked for comps, which I have avoided querying to them at the moment because you know what, I can't think of comps for this story, which might be quite a bad thing, actually. Uh, but that that's the way it goes. And some of them have done things like, oh, um, where do you see this book sitting on, or what books do you see this sitting beside on the shelves in a bookstore? which I don't quite take as comps, um, but I've done things like Witches Steeped in Gold and All the Stars and Teeth because they share sort of the same magic and wonder of like a rich new world. The epic quests that like force the protagonist to decide who it is that they really want to be. And I feel like those two books have the same sort of vibe. Um, is that enough to use them as comps? You know what? I don't know. Um, so I don't, I don't have any, but yeah. My experience querying has been a really weird one because I can't really sit back and think, oh, what would I do differently in the future in regards to querying or what would, you know, what would I advise people to do? Like, I can't tell you that. I have absolutely no idea whatsoever. Like, I'd love to sit here and go, you know, this has been my experience and this is what I would do differently and this is what I advise or these are the tips I would give other people. Um, but no, I, I can't do that because I, I don't really have uh, many thoughts about it because I haven't really sat down to honestly think about how this querying experience has gone for me. It went about as well as I expected it to go, to be fair. Um, obviously, you know, you start querying in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> Not the best thing to do at a time where it's a lot more difficult to break into YA nowadays because you know the market is so oversaturated. It's not been a terrible experience by any means. It's been like a like a substandard experience, like a eh, eh that went about as well as I expected it to. Didn't really expect it to go anywhere, to be fair, and I was completely right in that respect. The most annoying part of it was the waiting which I knew would happen and I knew that the waiting would be the worst of it and I've had um, really long wait times in between sending the query and receiving a reply. The quickest that I have ever had a reply back was seven days, which I was just like, I sent this seven days ago and you're responding to, to it already. Um, and it also happens to be the fa my favourite rejection that I have received out of all of my rejections. Um, because obviously rejection is a whole big thing um, in regards to the whole writing experience as a whole. You're going to get rejected a lot, you're going to get criticised a lot. You basically need to treat it like water rolling off of a duck's back. It's not personal in any sense of the word against you as a writer. It's just personal against, you know, all the blood, sweat and tears you've poured into the story that you're sharing. But, you know, you start to wonder things when you query and you keep getting rejections like, oh, is the story not as good as I thought it was? Um, oh, is there something really wrong with it? Because you don't get personalised rejections. But this one is definitely by far my favourite rejection that I have. And I do still, when I'm feeling down um, about the whole querying process, I do actually come back and uh, read this query. Uh, just to pack myself up a little bit. Um, it reads, I enjoyed Thrice a Broken Oath. It was an interesting concept. However, I'm afraid I didn't quite love this enough to take it further. Obviously, this is a very subjective view as we all know reading is a subjective business and another agent may well feel differently. It's so important that your agent feels passionately about your work in order to represent you in the best of their abilities. I know it can be helpful to have feedback. I'm afraid I'm not able to give detailed insight, but rest assured that if anything really stands out to me while I'm reading, then I do pass that feedback on. So the fact that I haven't mentioned anything specific on this occasion shows that there was no particular element I felt I could usefully comment on. I simply didn't connect with the story quite as strongly as I would wish. So to me, that says you've got a good book. Um, it just wasn't quite for me. I don't have any feedback because there wasn't anything glaringly wrong with it. Um, 
so yes, I, according to this agent anyway, it is a solid story, which I'm very happy about. Obviously, it might not be the right story for the agents I'm submitting to. It might not be the right story for this time. It might be that, you know, they're gearing towards a different shift um, and what is, they, they've got the insight of what is popular and what is um, being pushed out there at the moment for the future. This might not fit in with that. You know, but I, I do so love how this agent like took the time to to write this rejection. And uh, she goes on giving me advice about uh, support and discussion that I could look into within the UK and places that I can go to um, in order to sort of hone my craft. So it was it was it was it was really, really good. It was a really, really good rejection all rejections should be like this rejection i know they can't be obviously but it would be nice as opposed to you know the emails that you get which seem like it's just copy and pasted i'm really sorry i'm not interested sort of thing that some of the other emails felt like i realized i just went straight into talking about rejection when i was talking about my experience <laughs> basically my experience was rejection i have not gotten um any requests for a full manuscript um, I, it's literally just been based off of the 50 pages or the three chapters or the 10,000 words. No, thank you. Um, I don't know whether that says something about the first 50 pages of my book or not. Uh, it's definitely something I can look into, into making it stronger, um, in order for them to sort of have a bit more, oh, I really want to know what happens next sort of vibe. Um, but that's something that I can obviously think about in the future in regards to Slice of Broken Oath. When I first started querying, I queried as Project Body Swap because it didn't have a title back when I first started querying. I don't know at what point I started querying it as Slice of Broken Oath. Um, and I, obviously I don't think like changing the name harmed me in any way. I did change uh, the covering letter that I had from when I first started to making it a bit more detailed um, in my more recent queries that I've been sending off. I think where I had a couple of queries in a batch where they wanted a bit more information regarding the book or regarding me that I sort of drafted a query with all that information and then just decided to continue using that entire query with all the additional information for everybody else as well because it sounded a little bit more professional and it sounded a little bit more um, personal in regards to me as a writer. But it's not like I purposely went around and you know really made every single query letter super personal to every single literary agent because again that was just more research that I wasn't quite bothered to do. I hate doing research and I don't think a lot of the literary agents really care if things are personalized or not I mean there are a fair few literary agents who you don't send it to who you don't send your query to a specific agent you just send it in general to um, a submissions email for the literary agents and the agents will read it although that's one thing I did enjoy about the process of the uh, UK querying as opposed to what I've heard about the US um, the agents read your work Either way, doesn't matter if they enjoy your query or if the query intrigues them or not based on those three words, they will read every single thing that they get. They won't um, cherry pick based on, oh, that sounds interesting, I'll read that. So that is very helpful because that took a lot of pressure off me trying to make my three sentences um, as intriguing as possible, um, which is which again is a very, very subjective thing. And it's a very difficult thing to do. So that took a lot of the pressure off trying to form the perfect covering letter because I knew that the agent that I was sending it to was going to read it regardless. I think in one literary agency they said we don't even bother reading the covering email first sometimes we just go straight for the manuscript and then read the covering letter and the synopsis afterwards and I was just like that's fine by me <laughs> don't read my terrible work. I have an email who's it from it's going to be from WordPress oh no it's not Oh, one sec. What? What? Ah, oh, look at that. It's a rejection email. <laughs> okay, so this officially marks the quickest rejection I have ever gotten back. I sent this. I sent this query off yesterday, and I've already gotten a response less than twenty-four hours later. 
Well done. The quickest I've ever gotten. Yeah, it was it was a rejection. <sighs> I'm so disappointed. All of the queries that I've sent off, I've still got quite a lot of them open as well um, that I have still haven't heard back from. This past year, I have sent off 25 submissions. And out of those 25 submissions that I have sent off, I have had 11 rejections. It was 10 when I first started filming this video. Now it's 11. Who is that from? 11 rejections out of 25, which means I'm still awaiting responses from 14 literary agents. That doesn't sound too bad, does it? Only 11 rejections out of 25. Um, it's about to be worse. Out of those 14 that I'm still awaiting responses from, three of them have been over a year. Two of them have been longer than nine months. One of them has been longer than six months. One of them has been longer than four months. Three of them have been around 11 weeks and four of them from yesterday. So even though I have officially had 11 rejections, um, I'm pretty confident we can count the five, six that have been lingering in a, an inbox for six months to a year as rejections themselves because yeah a lot of the um literary agents will respond um some of them just won't get back to you at all and you can take their silence as a no which is a very crummy thing but i sort of understand like you can't you can't honestly reply to everyone especially if you are a really super busy uh, literary agents um it's just frustrating like not knowing do i feel differently now than when i first started querying like absolutely now it's sort of just it's gonna sound weird but now it just sort of feels like a chore to do like i hadn't i didn't really stick to get one rejection send another one off i started off doing that but then eventually it just evolved into i've gotten a few rejections oh let me just send off a few more now because i wasn't hearing anything back so i wasn't getting the official rejections when i sent some off in january i got three very quick rejections within a few weeks in january or by february and obviously now it's the end of march and i've only just sent off some more queries i'm sort of at the point where it's just like i might as well just send all the queries off like what what does it really matter if I do, because they're all just gonna get rejected anyway. Like that's my mindset now. The sort of like hope I had for this novel has just gone um, massively, massively downhill uh, to the point where I'm sitting here thinking, was it even the right project for me to start querying in the first place? Um, is it as strong as I think it is? Um, you know what? No, I don't. I don't think it is. Um, and obviously it is very subjective and I think the difficulty is with me especially is that or when beta reading especially when you're getting feedback if you don't have like a large pool of feedback for beta reading you tend to get one type of feedback um, which is either mostly positive or mostly negative in regarding to your story or you'll get mostly negative and one positive. So you'll go with what the negative is saying and you'll make the changes. And I think this time around, it's like with the very small pool of beta readers that I ended up managing to find, who ended up actually reading the book before I started querying? Um, the majority of it was mostly positive. There weren't any big changes to make. Uh, they enjoyed the book. Um, I had some work to do on uh, character motivation, which I then sorted out and, you know, sent off the beta again and it came back positive. So obviously from that, you know, I think it's in a good place, but, but do I need to work harder trying to find a bigger pool of beta readers to sort of critique the novel to a point where 
there is stuff that they've mentioned that I can work on. And that's sort of my thought process at the moment in regards to it. Because I remember, I don't, I can't remember when it was, it was at some point last year after I'd started querying, where I just randomly sent off um, a couple of beta readers for this novel, one of whom is still reading it. And it's been like six months now. Um, and obviously the feedback I got from that wasn't as favourable as the ones I'd gotten initially before I sent the um, query off. But then that's a very difficult thing to know how someone is going to critique your novel and how much work are they going to put into critiquing it and sort of looking at all of the aspects of it. And some people are just going to do like a, yeah, it was good, it was fun. I didn't connect to this character as much or this character annoyed me a little bit. And then you will have the ones who go into a lot more of a deeper thought process in regards to how they think the story went. Um, but you can't know how someone is going to present their critique before they start beta reading which is also another one of the issues that I constantly face is trying to find um, someone or a group of people who can provide you know that that type of feedback that I'm after otherwise you do go around thinking that you've you've written a really really strong book and you actually it actually isn't as strong as you think it is so I think that's I think that's the way it's gone I thought it was strong and obviously this has taught me that maybe it's not as strong as I think it is and the opening pages are not as strong and intriguing or the first 50 pages let's say are not as intriguing and strong as I assumed that they first were. Obviously I've just sent off these last five um, queries. I don't have any more queries on my list that I can currently send off in regards to Thrice the Broken Oath because the remaining five, um, five to six agents are currently closed for submissions and they have been closed for submissions for quite a long time now. Um, so who knows if they're ever gonna open back up again for submissions in the near future. So while I've had a fun time querying Thrice a Broken Oath, I honestly think it's time for me to stop querying Thrice a Broken Oath and um, so I stop the entire query process. Um, I'm not going to go and withdraw the queries that I've already sent off that I'm still awaiting responses for. I think, I think I'm just going to, I think I'm going to stop actively querying Thrice a Broken Oath now and I will um, withdraw it from further querying, I should say. And see, now it's one of those things where it's like, do I take it and do I shelve it? Or do I take it and, and do I work on it? But then if I want to take it and work on it, not only am I going to be adding to my workload this year, I'm going to have to find a group of people who can critique it in a very in-depth, critical way in regards to what I'm, they think I need to change to make it a stronger story. And that's just a difficult thing to do. But I'm going to have to do it. Sigh. And that also means if I'm not going to be querying Thrice a Broken Oath anymore, do I start querying another novel? Uh, my next big thoughts for things I want to query is Abingdon House, which is my middle grade magical realism series. Um, I do thoroughly enjoy Abingdon House. Um, I think it fits in very well with the sort of magic um, fantasy middle grades, upper middle grades that have been coming out recently, um, like Mario and the Knight Brothers um, and Nevermore. Uh, it's got sort of that epicness. To, I hope it's got that sort of epicness to it because now I'm like, I think Abingdon House number one is quite a strong novel. But now I'm also double guessing my my abilities to see whether my books are strong and ready or not. Um, so what I might do is put the first Abingdon House book up for beta reading, try and get a good pool of people and hopefully they're going to be like super critical because I work best with super critical and specific rather than vague. 
um, because then it gives me a firm focus of what it is I need to change and add. So I'm already working on rewriting and re-outlining the entirety of the Abingdon House series this year. Um, so what's re so what's you know revising the first book again in order to start prepping to query that? Um, maybe I'll have a little bit more luck with a middle grade than I will a YA, unless middle grade is also becoming overly saturated and I'm not going to be able to get in that way either. <sighs> but we're not going to think about that. We're just going to think about other stuff, because you know what? Yay. Talking about all of this rejection <laughs> sort of bummed me out a little bit. <laughs> Didn't think of that when I thought, let me talk about my querying experience. Well done, Sarah. So that was my querying experience for Thrice a Broken Oath. Um, yes, it has been very disappointing, but honestly, I sort of went into it daydreaming about, you know, getting accepted, obviously, but, you know, expecting the rejections and the disappointment, um, which I feel is sort of like the best way to go into something like this. It's very hard to be disappointed if you expect disappointment. Definitely hasn't put me off querying in general. It's just made me realise I need to take a longer, harder look at the novels that I'm writing before deciding if they are ready to go to be queried. And it has also highlighted the importance of me finding like a few permanent critique partners for all of my novels who can continuously assist um, with revisions and feedback, etc, etc. So now I get to sort that difficult thing out. Let me know down in the comments below what has been the most nerve wracking thing you have ever done as a writer. Have you queried before? How did your experience go? Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Good thoughts and happy writing.